Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and welcome to another Kerbal Space Program 2 video on this channel. Don't worry, I am not being held at gunpoint, I am not torturing myself, I am enjoying this a bit more. And what we are going to be doing today is sending a full space shuttle stack to the sun. Yes, I'm going to fly through the sun because there aren't any thermal properties in the game yet, so we might as well go and give it a visit before it blasts us and melts us into tiny little pieces, whilst we still can anyway. And I wanted to send a full space shuttle stack because it's a little bit more interesting than sending some tiny little diddy lander. However, that does mean this craft is going to be incredibly large because the space shuttle stack is quite heavy on its own. Even just getting that to orbit is going to be quite a challenge, but sending that all the way to the sun as well, which requires a ludicrous amount of delta V, because, well, you know, getting close to the sun just does that. You have to slow down an awful lot in relation to the sun to get anywhere close, and I want to fly straight through it, or at least fly within its atmosphere, although that is a problem that I do encounter later on, that the sun doesn't have an atmosphere. But right now what we are doing is spending some time in the vehicle assembly building where I am designing this ludicrous craft to get me into orbit and then onwards to the sun. However, one thing that I was encountering is that my Delta V was incredibly bugged out whilst I was designing here. You can see it says currently I have about 4,706 meters per second of Delta V on my first stage. That is completely incorrect. That is actually about 500 meters per second. So whilst I was designing this, I thought, brilliant, I've got loads of Delta V. This should easily make it to orbit and onwards to where I want to go. And I was also thinking, well, it does look a little bit small as well. Maybe that might be a bit wrong. Well, yes, it turns out it was very, very wrong. And I ran out of fuel with that stage after only burning it for maybe about a minute. But now it's just a quick paint job to finish this off before rolling it out to the launch pad and trying to get to the sun for the first time. And unfortunately, that was me getting a screenshot and of course, the aerodynamics GUI comes up whenever you try and take a screenshot because Steam is F12 and there's no dedicated in-game screenshot function yet at the moment. But this is me realizing I definitely do not have enough Delta V for this. I'm only moving 150 meters per second right now and my Delta V for my first stage is going down very, very, very fast indeed. And there we go, the first stage is completely drained of all fuel. And I think, no, there is no way I'm good in this. So I reverted back to the VAB and tried again with bigger fuel tanks. And yes, this was unfortunately unable to get off the pad for some reason. It was still quite wobbly and eventually it just fell to the ground and exploded like so. Not going well so far. And whenever I reverted back to the VAB, my entire craft disassembled itself and I had to revert to a previous save of the craft which meant that every time I wanted to launch again, and there were several attempts of doing this, I think it took me 12 tries to actually finish it, I had to rebuild nearly the entire thing. But finally, we have a design that should work. It has redonkulous wings on it. They are about the size of, well, I don't know, they're huge. Look at them at the bottom of that. And what I've decided to do, because many of the attempts that I did doing this, well, they didn't go very well whenever I tried to pitch over the rocket, because even though, as in the last video that I mentioned, that I have increased joint rigidity, well, the things still flop all over the place most of the time. So I thought, we're just going to point straight up. We're going to fly straight up. It's not very efficient, but I launched at a time when the sun was in the northeast, southwest, in the west, yeah. I had to uh, go never eat shredded wheat in my brain there to figure out which way was which with the cardinal directions, because I can't do that off the top of my head, <laughs> unfortunately. But yes, no, the sun is in the west. If I point straight up, that means when I exit Kerbin's sphere of influence, I should be burning in the right direction to lower my periaps around the sun. Perfect. So all I have to do is yeah, just go straight up like we are. And it means that hopefully the floppy rocket syndrome doesn't tear my vessel apart, which it didn't. I think this design might have been able to get to orbit normally, but you can see we are already getting a little bit of wobble just by pointing straight up, which maybe it wouldn't work. The boosters have now run out of fuel. 
and I ditch them and carry on with the core stage for quite a while. This honestly is one of the most boring launches I think I've ever done in Kerbal Space Program. Just pointing up, there is no gravity turn, no real input from me. I just have to point straight up and go. It is uh, a... <laughs> Probably not the most entertaining of launches, but well, you could be entertained by the fact that there is an entire space shuttle stack. Yes, a space shuttle stack even on the top of this ridiculous looking contraption. Although I do have to say, in order to get this to work, unfortunately, the external fuel tank and the solid rocket boosters on the side of the space shuttle are not filled with fuel. I did want to do that, and the first iteration of this design, which we saw blow up on the launch pad and, you know, just wobble out of existence and not have enough Delta V when it said I should have had enough Delta V, that was fully fueled. But to build a rocket that could lift that to space and then to the sun, with the current problems that I personally am running into with Kerbal Space Program 2, I'm not sure if it would have been possible. It, it very well might have been, and I probably could have maybe built like a thing that had billions and billions and billions upon struts all over the place. But for now, in order to get this video out in a reasonable time, I decided, yeah, we're just gonna empty the fuel tanks and make it a little bit of a lighter payload. But you can see, we are nearly at the sun. I have burnt straight up and look at that, we are. We're, we're heading straight for Kerbal. We're going to the sun. Hopefully we land at night because obviously in order to land on the sun, you should go at night. So it's not so hot. Not that it matters if it's hot or not in the game at the moment anyway, because there is no thermal properties. I know someone did mention in the last video that I should do something to the sun because there isn't any thermal properties. I also got told on my live stream that I did when the game first came out that I also should send something to the sun. Yes, a lot of people have mentioned I should go to the sun. So here I am going to the sun with a full space shuttle stack. A uh, unfueled full space shuttle stack, but a full space shuttle stack nonetheless. So you can see that my periaps around the sun is about 90,000 meters at the moment, so I decide to decouple the space shuttle. I thought that 90,000 meters would be roughly enough of the sun's atmosphere to slow me down and hopefully capture into, well, the sun's atmosphere. Because in Kerbal Space Program 1, the sun does have an atmosphere and I think it starts at about 600,000 meters. So I thought, yes, the sun's gonna have an incredibly thick atmosphere, it will slow us right down, hopefully it doesn't tear us apart. Unfortunately, as previously mentioned, well, yeah, no, there is no atmosphere at the sun yet, so I'm gonna have to think of a different way to actually get to the surface of the sun, or maybe just even have to fly straight through it. But I am on my way to the sun. We get a nice little beautiful shot of the full space shuttle stack interplanetary or interplanetary. I, I don't know, what's it called if you go straight to the sun? Uh, the Helios encounter? I, honestly, I have no idea. But suddenly there is sun and uh, yes, unfortunately, more screenshots time because I thought that was really cool with the silhouette of the space shuttle stack with the ginormous ball of hydrogen burning in the background. And obviously, because we are so close now, the camera starts getting a little bit wobbly and going a little bit janky. But we are only 5,000 kilometers or five and a half thousand kilometers above the surface of the sun. And now, because of the magic of video editing, we are 650 and... <laughs> If you time warp through 600 kilometers, if you're time warping when you are under 600 kilometers near the sun, then your entire craft will just disappear out of existence as it just did. But you can see we are now going to not time warp and fly through this with no time warp, which is going to be rather slow. And the craft remains intact. It doesn't pop out of existence. Although you may be able to notice that there is something flying off of the space shuttle randomly at random points. That is a bit of debris that comes up on the main menu screen. I got to have a bit of a closer look at it at a later point in this video. And it's just a blue and red capsule with a Kerbal stuck on the side, looking very scared. I mean, if I was personally a Kerbal on a tiny little capsule on a collision course with the sun, I think I would be honestly terrified. So I don't blame them, whoever that or soul is. But we're now at about 150 kilometers above the surface, and this is when I realize I'm not slowing down whatsoever. Clearly, there is no atmosphere around the sun. This is rather unfortunate because my periaps around the sun is going to be about 68 kilometers right now, and I can't time warp until I get above 600 kilometers. I'm going to have to wait for a really, really long time, but luckily, this is sped up to four times in editing for me to get to a position where maybe I 
can lower my peri apps and actually bring it to somewhere decent or bring it under the surface of the sun to see what happens if you fly straight through the sun. And that is what I will be doing eventually. We are going up again now, so we are almost out of this rather irritating situation that I did find myself in with that poor Kerbal still just being flung off of this space shuttle. But there we go, I skipped ahead, and we are now at our apoapsis around the sun, where I can quickly perform a little bit of a burn to bring my periaps beneath the sun's surface, minus 35 kilometers beneath the sun's surface. So we are definitely going to be heading straight through this time. And you may notice over on the maneuver nav ball even, that my apoapsis is currently zero meters. I've got no idea why that is, because my apoapsis is still roughly where Kerbin should be. So so that's a little bit of a bug. I'm probably going to go and have to report that on the feedback forums. Yes, another bug that I have encountered whilst doing something as silly as trying to fly straight through the surface of the sun. I mean, I really shouldn't be surprised at this point that I will be encountering bugs doing this. This is definitely something that you should not be able to do. Come on, add thermal properties. I want them. I want to be able to use heat shields. I want them to have a function, but I know that they will be added and that they are working on them. And I'm very much looking forward to them being added because it makes it a little bit more fun when you can crispy fry your Kerbals upon re-entry of Kerbin. That's always something that I personally love doing, but maybe I am just a bit of a masochist. Anyway, we are below the kill zone, so I am no longer able to time warp. Let's see what happens when we get below zero meters. Absolutely nothing. Nothing happens except for that poor little bit of debris is now very much visible, and this was how I knew exactly what it was. Eventually, the surface of the sun does clip through us and it looks a bit weird because now we can no longer see the sun except for the sun flare. But yeah, nothing massively exciting unfortunately. So I think what I will have to do is go and check out Jewel and see what happens when you try and land something on there because I feel like that will be more interesting than just nothing. But the Solar Express, yes, has completed its journey and Val is looking terrified. A big thanks to Pentium, So Not The Hero Type, That Unreal Guy, Zaretya, and the rest of my patrons and members for their continued support. I have been Karnasa, like and subscribe for more, and I will see you later.